Okay. Uh, şey açtım mı? Okay. Let's do one uh, example. Uh, uh, let's find the intersection point. point uh, of the lines uh, let's say uh, 2x minus 3y equals uh, 1 and uh, 2x minus 3y equals 4 in the real projective plane. Bunlar uh, standard düzlemde line'lar. What kind of lines these are in R2? Uh, şöyle bir şey. X'i uh, 1 bölü 2'de, Y'si eksi uh, şeyde şöyle bir şey birisi. Diğeri de şöyle. Right. Just two lines. They do not of course intersect in the usual plane. They are parallel. But we know that in real projective plane they have to intersect. How can we find the intersection point? Uh, in uh, RP2 they are represented Presented by the equations. What are those equations? Nasıl yapıyorduk? Ee, yani bunu düzlem gibi yapacağım, değil mi? Y bölü x bölü z, y bölü z yazacağım. So 2x over z minus 3y over z equals 1. And this corresponds to this plane, actually. And this one, 2x over z minus 3y over z equals 4. And this corresponds to what? Uh, 2x minus uh, 3y equals uh, 4z. So I have these two planes in R3 or projective lines. How can I find the intersection? Well, we just write down the uh, intersecting line, right? I have these two planes. They intersect. How do you find the intersection point? Uh, well, let me just multiply this by uh, 4 and equate to this one, right? So let's multiply this by 4 and subtract. Ne elde ederiz? Yani bunu eksi dörtle çarpıp toplayayım. Eksi dörtle çarpıp toplarsak, eksi dörtle çarpıp toplarsam, eksi sekiz, eksi altı x, eksi dörtle çarptım, artı on iki, eksi dokuz, şey artı dokuz, burası da sıfır, değil mi? Eksi dörtle çarptım, eksi sekiz, eksi altı, eksi dörtle çarptık, on iki, dokuz. So, they intersect along this line, right? This is a line in RP, uh, so uh, in R3, uh, a line in R3. Uh, what is the point this corresponds to the, uh, so it corresponds to a point in uh, RP2. What is the point this corresponds? Uh, bir tane değil mi? Ee, şeyin e, doğrunun şöyle bir doğru bu. Atıyorum şu e, x, y, z olsun. Bu doğru e, y eşittir 2 bölü 3 x. Şöyle bir şey değil mi? <gülüyor> 
2 bölü 3 diye eşittir. 2 bölü 3. Yani o zaman şöyle bir doğru olacak bu düzlemde. So this is a line in uh, R2 minus 6x plus y, uh, 9y equals 0. Uh, or y equals 2 uh, over 3x. What is the point this corresponds in the RP2? RP2 it corresponds to the following. Ee, nasıl bulabilirim bunu? Bu doğrunun üzerinden değil mi? Ee, rastgele bir nokta alsam olur. Hangi noktayı alalım? X yerine 3 yazayım. Y ne oldu? 2. Z nedir? Z koordinatı yok. 0. Değil mi? Şu. Bu da aslında nedir? Bu sayılar tabii ki aslında ya da şu şey e, bu nedir? Yani sonsuzdaki doğrunun üzerinde şu noktadayız veya bunu şöyle de yazabilirim. E, zero pardon. 1 2 bölü 3 0 bu neye denk geliyor aslında? Ee, şu doğruların ortak eğimi. Değil mi? Yani şunu yazabiliriz. Ee, so this is the common slope of these two lines. So these two lines intersect at infinity where the z coordinate is zero and the point they intersect corresponds to this point and this is nothing but the common slope of these two lines. Okay, so we not only obtain the point where this intersects but we have extra information that they, inter they intersect at the uh, point on the uh, line at infinity where this number is just the common uh, Lop. coordinate systems on RP2. What's a coordinate system? Uh, those who took uh, differential geometry course, uh, there you have uh, seen coordinate systems. So, uh, you know, this RP2 is a weird object, right? It contains the whole plane, but it is compact. Okay, it's a kind of weird object. And to study on this, we locally want to see it as the usual plane. Yani bu RP tunun ne olduğunu çok fazla anlamıyoruz ama şunu yapabiliriz hala. Çalışırken noktasal olarak onu düzlemi bir parçası gibi görebiliriz. Tamam mı? Diferansiyel geometride de yaptığınız şey. Onlara da biz koordinat sistemleri diyeceğiz. So these coordinate systems or coordinate patches just help us to work on this gadget, whatever it is, uh, so that you know we can see it locally as the usual plane, usual R2. Okay? How can we do this? Well, let's go back to the definition of this. We know that this is just set of equivalence classes where this point in R3 is not the origin, right? We deleted the origin. This means what? This means that at least one of these coordinates is not zero. No matter which point you choose, at least one coordinate is not zero. Therefore, I can just 
do the following. I write u sub x or sometimes u sub zeros. There is also this uh, notation which we will use when we consider higher dimensional case. I will write x0, x1, x2, and so on. And then I will call this u sub 0, u sub 1, u sub 2. But for time being, since I'm using the coordinates x, y, z, let me just call it uh, u sub uh, x. This corresponds to the following, x, y, z. But x coordinate is not 0. What is u sub y? This is x, y, z, where the y coordinate is not 0. u sub z is x, y, z, and z coordinate is not 0. And I know that they cover this plane. Why is that? Because if you choose a point here, at least one of the coordinates is not 0. Therefore, this is equal to the union of this. So I have this. Uh, okay. Bif, uh, neyse onu yazarım. Bu nesne, şunu biliyoruz zaten. Bu bizim usual planimiz değil mi? Z koordinatın sıfır olmadığı yer. Orada zaten Z koordinatını bir yapabiliyorum. Bir yaptığım için de o bizim işte e, normal öklit planimizdi. Bu artı ile aynı şey. Artı bu usual usual uh, plane, Euclidean plane. Eşleme ne? Burada bir noktayı alın. X, Y, Z. Bunu ne ile eşliyorum ben? Z koordinatı sıfır olmadığı için Z koordinatına bölüyoruz. Yani ilk önce şöyle yazıyorum. X, X over Z, Y over Z, 1. But then this corresponds to the point X over Z, Y over Z. In the plane. What about this? The points here corresponds to what? They correspond this time. I will not divide by Z, but I will divide by Y. So this point will correspond to which point? Uh, X over Y, uh, Y over Y. Maybe I, first I write like this. Z over Y, but this is just now one. Right, and this corresponds to the point x over y, z over y. So I just regard this point as a pair of uh, you know real numbers. Now it's a point in R two, and this, in this case, this point, I will just divide by x. And uh, so it will be, it will correspond to, this is one, so y over x, z over x. This way, you know, uh, this gadget is a copy of R2. This is another copy of R2, and this is another copy of R2, okay? So each of these, open sets, they are open sets because they are defined via inequalities. Uh, they are open sets. Each one is a copy of our plane. Okay, is each one is a copy of our plane and they cover this RP2. Okay, they cover this RP2. Yani bu RP2'yu tam olarak ne olduğunu anlayamıyoruz ama ee, ne biliyoruz? Üç tane düzlemle bunu örtebiliyorum. Üç tane düzlemle örtebiliyorum. Bu üç tane düzlemi birbiriyle yapıştırıyorum. RP2 çıkıyor. İki tane yetmez. Niye yetmez? Ee, şimdi açıklayamam onu. 
Ama iki tane etmez. Yani nedeni şu kabaca söylemek gerekirse RP2 yönlendirilemez bir yüzey. Ama iki taneyle örtseydiniz o zaman o nesne yönlendirilebilir olurdu. Dolayısıyla da o yüzden örtemezsiniz. Yani üç tane böyle şey gerekiyor. Open set. Okey. Şimdi bu ne işe yarar? Let's find intersections of uh, here we consider intersection of lines. Now let's consider for example intersection of a, a line with a uh, parabola. Okay. Uh, okay. Find the intersection of the uh, line y equals uh, yok, x equals zero yani y ekseni uh, and the parabola bola y equals x squared in R2 and RP2. Şimdi R2 da basit. Right? This parabola is this. And this line just the y-axis. Right? This is the x equals zero. The y-axis. The y-axis. This is just the parabola x equals, x equals y squared. And they intersect at a single point. But what about uh, in RP2? Because, you know, this thing goes to infinity. This end seems to go to infinity also. And let's see where they, uh, if they, Uh, going to meet at infinity. How can we do this? Well, to find the point, the uh, possible points of intersection uh, at infinity. Uh, let's project-wise the uh, line and line and the parabola. Ne demek project-wise? Yani Euclidean koordinatlardan projektif koordinatlara geçeceğiz. Now, x equals zero. Uh, we are in the plane, right? This is in the plane or in the coordinate chart. This is in the xy plane, usual xy plane. Or this is just the u sub z, right? Where the z coordinate is not zero. Uh, how do we go back from uh, this to this? If you have a point like this, I consider it like this, and then I consider this gadget. Uh, in practice, it will correspond to the following. This x equals zero. Instead of this, we write uh, uh, bunu şeyde yazacağız. X over Z equals zero olarak yazacağım. Uh, so and then I multiply by Z we get this 
x equals zero, but this time, this is the plane in R3, right? So this is a line in R2, but now I consider as a plane in R3. What about this gadget? So we do the same thing. Instead of this, I write this, and then z over y squared. So this gives us what? If you clear the denominators, we get uh, y times z equals x squared. So again, uh, an object in three space, right? This is a surface in three space, quadratic surface. This is a plane in three space. So uh, a surface in R3. I have a plane in R3. This is the actually YZ plane, right? This is the YZ plane. And this is the surface. And they, of course, will intersect. Okay, let's see where they intersect. Okay, let's find the intersection. So x equals zero and uh, y, z equals uh, x squared. How can you solve this? Well, just plug this to here. So we get uh, y times z equals zero. Well, this is possible only if y equals zero or z equals zero. X is already zero, so I have two intersection points. What are they? X is zero, Y is zero. What about Z coordinate? Well, if these are zero, the Z coordinate cannot be zero. So it has to be a non-zero number. So we may just take it to be one. Or X is zero. Z is zero, but this time Y has to be one. So we get two intersection points. This intersection point in the coordinate plane U sub Z corresponds to what? Zero over one, zero over one, which is just the point zero, zero. This is... Uh, this intersection point, okay? This point is just the zero, zero point. What about this one? This is a point where uh, the Z coordinate is zero. So this is the point at infinity. So this parabola and the line intersects at two points. One of them in the usual plane, where we see it, and the other one is at the infinity, okay? So this is the point at the infinity. I find them? Z coordinate is free, I find them? Olsun you sub z o, o, o sorun değil. Sonsuzdaki noktalar neye karşılık geliyordu? Düzlemdeki doğrulara, x, y düzlemindeki doğrulara. Yani z'nin sıfır olduğu yerlere. Z'nin sıfır olduğu yerler sonsuzdaki noktalar. Bu da onlardan birisi. Değil mi? Bu z koordinatı sıfır. O yüzden bu point at infinity. İşte projektif geometrinin Gücü burada. Ee, nedir o? Bir line'la bir quadratic surface, e, pardon, quadratic curve, yani parabol. Normalde, değil mi? So, 
this is the you know power of projective geometry. If you just take a parabola and a you know line like this, clearly they intersect at two points. But if you choose this line, you know, uh, spatially like this, then they intersect at a one point. But actually, they still intersect at two points. The other one is at the infinity. Okay. So if you actually just rotate this, what happens? This point will go up like this, and this point will come to this one. And this point goes to the infinity as you just move this line. Okay. And projective geometry keeps that information. If you don't use projective geometry, then you don't see this point. It just disappears, but actually it doesn't. It just runs to infinity, but we can control what happens at infinity. That's the power of projective geometry. Uh, and from this point, we can just switch to why do we need complex geometry? Well, you know, if you choose the line like this, you, we see that they intersect at two points. But what if, if I choose that line like this? They don't intersect at all, right? Well, in real coordinates, yes, they do not intersect. But if you use complex coordinates, again, they intersect and exactly at two points. Okay? And that's the power of complex numbers. Now, what was our equation? This was y equals x squared. And uh, let's choose a line, which line? Let's say it doesn't intersect this one. Let's say uh, z, no, uh, y equals minus one, right? Y equals minus one. They do not intersect in the real world, but they intersect in the complex world. I can just solve this too. How? Well, y equals x squared, y equals minus one. This gives me x squared is equal to minus one, and x is plus minus i. So we obtain two intersection points. What are they? Uh, x coordinate is i, y coordinate is minus one, and So uh, in complex case then, a line and a parabola always intersects at two points. I can again arrange that, you know, one of these points or two of them, they both uh, go to uh, the uh, points at infinity. You can arrange that. Uh, I'll tell you. Quadratic de olur mu? Yani intersection pointi line'a sonsuza atabilir miyiz? Quadratic de. Yoksa ha, line atarız olur. Evet yani orada da uh, line'ı sonsuza atmak tabi Yok yani equation olarak e, yazmak istesek o zaman tabi o e, evet. Neyse yani karşımıza çıkacak böyle örnekler. Uh, I hope you uh, start uh, appreciating you know projective geometry. Actually it gives us a uh, more complete picture of what's going on, okay? Uh, the usual plane geometry actually is just uh, one coordinate patch of the real projective space. You just spend all your life uh, in one coordinate patch. But the whole, you know, projective space is much bigger and uh, much more interesting, okay? Evet.
Evet. Ee, RP2 non orientable e, ispatı kazık. Çok kolay değil. Ee, ha yani tanımı öyle alırsan okey de ee, Yani işte non orientable nasıl tarif ettiğine göre değişiyor. Ee, öyle dersen okey. O, o equal bir tanım. Yani do söylediğin doğru o yüzden. Peki. Ee, şimdi RP2'yu anladık. Değil mi? Ee, o tanımı doğrudan her yere genişletebiliriz. Nasıl? Real Projective Line nedir bu? Real Projective Plane neydi? R3'teki doğrular. Değil mi? Projective Line ne olacak? R2'deki doğrular. So, bunu R P1 olarak göstereceğim. The space of lines in R2 uh, passing through the the origin. Bu daha kolay değil mi? Yani uzayımız şu. Orijinden geçen doğrular. Her bir doğru, so any uh, line is just a point. So my space is just the lines passing through the origin. Bunu şöyle görebilirim o zaman. RP1 or P1. Uh, yine aynı şekilde, if you choose any point here x, y, any other point is just lambda x, lambda y. So I can just regard uh, them as just equal as class of uh, points. I again delete the origin. Otherwise, everything collapses to a single point because if you identify all the points on this line, then every point is ident identified with the origin. Therefore, you have only one point. So we delete the origin. Uh, and then we divide this by the relation again x comma y is lambda x lambda y. Okay. Uh, this is easy to describe. Why is that? We can play the same trick. We can play the same trick. You know, every line through the origin intersects the unit circle in two points. This point and this point. Therefore, this thing is equal to the following. Just take the unit circle, just take the unit circle and divide by the following equals relation. Identify this point with this point. Okay. Yani şu noktayı şununla eşliyorum. Bunu yaparsanız ne elde edersiniz? Bakın bunu görmesi kolay. Şimdi her bir noktayı uh, so I identify every point with its uh, with its antipodal to draw the picture of a quotient space you have to draw a picture so that Every point on the picture corresponds to a unique equals class. This is not a picture of the quotient space because here, you know, every equals class doesn't correspond to a single point. It corresponds to two points. Therefore, this is not the right picture for the projective line. What can I do to get rid of one of the intersection points? Well, I can just cut it through the equator like this, right? 
and delete the southern uh, part. So I have just this arc. Now every line, right, intersects this at one point. But you have to be careful. Why is that? Because, well, there is this, still this line which intersects this at two points. So we have to get rid of one of these points also. Well, you can do this, but this is not, you know, a nice thing. Why is that? Because you see, uh, okay, you know, this point here is identified this point, and this point is very close to this point. So as you move this line, this point comes to here, this point comes to here, but this shows what? The points here and here should be close to each other. However, in this description, this point and this point, they are not close to each other. So the correct way of drawing this picture is the following. You just, you just, uh, identify these two points. And what you get when you identify these two points, you get, of course, another circle. Oh. So RP1 is actually is another circle. So this is easy to see, right? This is actually a uh, circle also. And what we do actually, uh, you just compactify, this is what you said, compactify R uh, with one point. Uh, you know, this, each line, each line uh, is uniquely determined by its slope, right? Slope let's say M, right? Any line through the origin is determined by its slope. Slope is a real number, right? But when it comes to Y axis, the slope becomes infinite. What we do, we just add that uh, slope to our uh, uh, space of slopes, right? So RP1, RP1 is just slope, uh, the space of slopes or the line of slopes, but you know, we don't wanna exclude Y axis and Y axis corresponds to the line with slope infinite. Uh, okay, şöyle yazayım onu. Şimdi yani uh, uh, her line, any line can be written like this through the origin, right? Through the origin or x equals m y. Of course, this m and this m, maybe I should write one over m y. Uh, uh, and this point, X, Y is just, can be written like, you know, dividing by X, you get one M. So a point actually corresponds to the slope of the line containing that point. Therefore, RP1, RP1 is the, the line of slopes. Okay, line of slopes. Uh, uh, and RP1 can be seen as follows. Slope can be any real number, R. Uh, we have to add only the slope of the infinite. So we just also put infinite. Therefore, you know, this RP1, it is basically a circle. It contains the whole real line. 
plus the point at infinity. Okay? Bunu da nasıl görebiliriz? Yani işte şu noktalardan birini sonsuz diye kabul edeceksiniz. Tamam mı? Şu. şu. Bu noktaya atarsanız if you just delete this point what you end up is just the uh, real line. Ee, evet, onun gibi. Hı -hı. Ee, ne diyecektim? Ha. Ee, RP 2'yu da, RP 2'yu da, so in homogeneous coordinate points are uh, like this, and this is not the origin, right? And I can write this again like this, uh, x, y. Either x is not zero or y is not zero. Rp1, yes. Uh, this is just, again, u sub x. Union u sub y, right? And u sub x again corresponds to real line. How? You just take this point and map it to where x coordinate is not zero. So I divide by x. So this is y over x. And u sub y is a copy of r. But this time, x over y is mapped to uh, x over y. I divide by y. So, you know, RP1 is a copy of two real lines, two real lines. And then I identify a point here you know, let's say this point, let's call it T with this point. What is this? If this is T, this is one over T. So I can just do the following. Just take two disjoint copies of real line and identify a point here, T, with one over T. So we identify T bit uh, nasıl yazayım bunu t one over t ile identify ediyoruz öyle mi yazmak lazım evet evet Yani bu t şurada, one over t burada. T sıfır olmamak üzere. Şey olarak da şuna denk geliyor bu. So picturally, you know, this is a circle actually. Uh, the two real lines are the following. One of them is this real line. You know, take this line. This point, call it zero. This point is the infinite. Okay, infinite. One of the real lines is this. The two ends of the real line goes to infinity. The other real line is what? It is this one. Its origin is here, but this time the end points are here. And this point here, T, on the other, uh, uh, 
you know, open set, it corresponds to 1 over t. Yani real line'ın iki kopyasını alıyorum. İkisini de şöyle büküyorum. Birinin kolları diğerinin sonsuzuna gidiyor. Tamam mı? Onları o şekilde yapıştırıyoruz. Elde ettiğimiz şey bir çember. Değil mi? Yani iki tane böyle işte demir çubuk alın. Bükün. Birini şöyle, birini de öbür türlü. Birinin sonsuza giden kolları diğerinin orijinine gelecek. Tamam mı? Ee, yani bunu RP1'da yapıp size ne olduğunu söyleyebildim. RP2'da yapamıyoruz çünkü bu kadar basit değil. Tamam mı? Ee, onun için başka şeylere gerek var. Okay, so let's stop for today.